welcome again uh, so far we have uh, defined coordinate based dynamic rotor structure in axis and rana uh, optimization successfully now that we before the fabrication process we need to verify that this machine will also fulfill mechanical uh, requirements as well in order to do that like uh, we need to analyze the full machine for the uh, electromagnetic analysis we only need to uh, analyze the quarter of the machine so that is enough but for the mechanical validation uh, we need full rotor geometry uh, in that case full uh, geometry full 3d geometry so in order to uh, 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 make a full uh, rotor geometry out of this quarter there is a simple way to do that first uh, i'm gonna copy this uh, quarter and create a separate maxl file uh, for the simplicity and i'm going to paste it here and click fit all windows now you see the quarter of the machine is uh, showing up here and to get uh, to get an uh, to get a full uh, rotor structure we can easily uh, use uh, this rotor structure and use the duplicate around axis option we need uh, four uh, quarters to complete a full rotor and click hit ok and now you see the full rotor is appear but these are parted so we need to unite them so uh, by pressing uh, pressing control you can select uh, the four quarters and click united to click unite to unite them. now it appears as a single rotor now now that we have created the full 2d geometry uh, from that if you know the stack le stack length you can easily create the 3d rotor structure in order to do that right click on it uh, select create 3d design and enter the uh, stack length or the axial length in my case it's 70.74 millimeters and click hit ok it will create uh, the 3d geometry for you all right but uh, in uh, in the workbench uh, it only accepts several file types so we need to make sure that the exporting file is compatible with the uh, mechanical workbench so in order to do that uh, select rotor and click modular click export and select IGES file type it's by default it's selected I think and type of type a name uh, you wish and save it all right uh, now the work in uh, Maxwell uh, window is almost done so you need to uh, open workbench all right let it uh, open all right now uh, workbench is uh, offering you so many uh, uh, static uh, and dynamic uh, simulation stuff since we are inter interested in uh, static uh, structural analysis we should select this one and if you uh, in order to add this into your uh, uh, file you should double click on it and now it has successfully added first uh, we should define uh, the uh, material properties in this window in order to do that right click on it and select edit by default structural steel is uh, selected and you may uh, be using a different material there is also a database and you can uh, try to find uh, the material that you are using if there is if the material is not available in this library uh, you can rename the existing file in my case i am going to uh, rename is uh, rename it as in 19 uh, steel and change the uh, material properties accordingly you can find uh, those mechanical properties on the internet easily so 
for the time being like uh, to save some time i am not going to change it but uh, in reality you should change them if they are not available in the uh, library so i'm going to close it and the second step is to import the geometry that we uh, just created just to do that like uh, it's pretty much straightforward uh, select the file click open now it's open and in order to do the uh, mechanical uh, stress analysis and deformation analysis we should open this geometry and this mechanical so in order to do that uh, it's uh, the uh, these steps are really guided so you don't have to worry about that uh, double click on the model it will open uh, the mechanical window right okay now uh, the geometry is open okay. I think this weaving angle is better and first uh, we should uh, this is a very systematic way of there is a very systematic way of doing things so first what I we, what I usually do is uh, click on this one and this will uh, show you what are the things that has uh, things that I have already done and what uh, what are the things that need to be done. So in this case, uh, the green uh, icon shows that they are already done, and uh, the the yellow color uh, icons shows that you need to insert those or edit those uh, tabs. So first, I'm going to insert structural load and. I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to insert a rotational velocity because my rotor structure is uh, will rotate along z axis. Uh, use uh, components here, and my maximum uh, rotational speed is 2700. And I input that one, and you need to select the rotor structure and click OK. Now it, it's selected and for this one uh, yeah for this one support for support i'm going to use uh, remote deplace displacement and i need to select the inner rotor surface the full surface need to be selected in this case it has divided into two parts so yeah it says two places and I don't need this in a uh, rotor surface to be uh, displayed so I'm gonna set zero to x y z coordinate and the behavior since it has consisted of uh, two faces I'm going to use couple option so and the final thing is uh, to solve and in order to solve i should uh, before solving i should add total deformation and one minus equivalent stress analysis that those are the reports that i am interested in right now so in order to solve that there's a uh, flash icon here and uh, before solving uh, it's uh, doing the machine because I haven't touched any machine, uh, so it's uh, automatically done for you. Done for you, and after that, uh, it will solve for the answer. Usually, it takes like uh, one to two minutes, depending on your machine. So the green uh, marks shows that it is done correctly. Now. Uh, the deformation is showing in micrometers you can change the view so i usually prefer to go with uh, without wireframe so and a smooth controls and this is an extra exaggerated view you can set it to undeformed value when see which points are the uh, has the maximum uh, thread to the deformation so in my case the third flex carrier is has the uh, vulnerability of the maximum deformation but but those are in, uh, the, those are within the uh, expected values 
for the equivalent stress analysis also you can zoom it in and see yeah. now these points have the uh, highest uh, deformation for M19 lamination uh, the maximum stress allowable is yield strength is around 400 megapascal so in that case we are very much safe so that's it so thank you